Hi friends, my name is Femke and welcome back to a new video on my channel. If this is your first time being here, hi, welcome to the family, I hope you stick around. Today I have a very exciting video because I love watching these kind of videos. Basically what I wanted to do, as many of you probably know, I mainly read classic literature. When it comes to classic literature, there's quite a lot of different editions you can get your books in. And one of my favorite editions are the Wordsworth classics because they're very cheap and very easy to read, easy to annotate, and I just really like them. I'm not always a fan of the design choices, but I still love these books and they're definitely what started my collection of classic literature because they were cheap, great way to start, and I thought I would show you guys all of the Wordsworth classics that I own because I love watching these videos because it gives such an insight in the books that a person has and it's just really fun. Also, on top of that, I've read almost every single one of these books so that's also fun to give you an idea and to talk about books that I otherwise don't really talk about because a lot of these I read quite early on in my classics journey and I haven't really talked about them since I read them so it would be fun to talk about them once again. I have exactly 20 books in this edition that's actually a lie because I have a couple that I don't have with me right now um, one of them being Frankenstein and one of them being a collection of ghost stories by Charles Dickens. So those are two others that I own but don't have with me right now. Other than that, I have 20 with me right here and there's only two that I haven't read. So without further ado, let's talk about all of the Wordsworth classics I own. The first couple of books are all by Jane Austen. I have tried collecting Jane Austen in many editions. I own Northanger Abbey in the Oxford World Classics and Emma in the Penguin Claude Bouts, but there's, I just love collecting Jane Austen's novels in the Wordsworth Classic editions because they have the illustrations and a lot of other editions don't and I just really like the illustrations, I think they're super cute so I really want to get Northanger Abbey and Emma in this edition as well but that's not for now. Right now I have the other four <laughs> Jane Austen novels here and what I think is so cute about these is that they all have like an accessory or an item on, of clothing on the cover. Um, I'll start... I organize these in alphabetical order, which is why we start with Jane Austen. So I'll first start with Mansfield Park. This is the only one I haven't read um, of the Jane Austen novels, which is so weird to say. It's on my planning for the end of this year, so I'll probably read it before the end of 2023. And that makes me excited, but also a little bit sad because having read all of her full novels is just such a big deal. Um, and I just, I'm just kind of sad that I will never be able to experience one of her full novels for the first time again. However, this one has like the little fans on the cover. Pastel colors, true Jane Austen style. I love it. Um, what I don't love, however, is that they changed somewhere in the past. <laughs> they changed the font from this one to this one. Can you see that? I prefer this one and it also just looks weird that there's different fonts, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to deal with that, I guess. Um, the other ones, Persuasion, has a little corset on the cover. Persuasion I think is such an underrated Jane Austen novel. I love it so much. The movie adaptation of last year, we're not gonna talk about it. It was not my favorite. It was not my favorite Jane Austen adaptation. It was a great movie in itself but it just it destroyed the story. It wasn't Persuasion. Anne Elliot does not act like that at all but I love Anne. She's one of my favorite heroines and I definitely think that this book is really really underrated. It's not my favorite Jane Austen because that one is Emma but it's definitely high up there. Then I obviously have the one and only Pride and Prejudice with a little bonnet on the cover. I don't know if you can tell but this one is slightly annotated. I'm not sure if it will focus. One of my first trials of annotation. Um, obviously I love this book. This is one of the first classics I read. The first Jane Austen I read quite obviously great starting point and this one has a little bonnet on it and then the last one I have in this edition is Sense and Sensibility with the little shoes which are actually very ugly <laughs> but yeah this this is probably my least favorite cover of the Jane Austen ones that I own I think the others are prettier this book I don't know what happened but 
I took it with me everywhere and it's completely destroyed. Which, they're cheap editions, so that's also fine. You can take them with you. There's also some water damage on the papers. I honestly don't know how that... I do remember, I read this last year during... Last year? Yeah, last year during the fall. And I had it in my tote bag and suddenly it started pouring rain. So it's also wet. But that's why we love the Worthward editions. They cost you nothing, so it doesn't matter <laughs> if they get damaged. But those were my little Jane Austen collection. And obviously after A comes B which brings us to the Bronte sisters. So first of all, we have Anne Bronte. I only, wait, they're actually slipping away. I only have one book by Anne Bronte, which is Agnes Grey, also destroyed. Um, this book I really liked. It's not my favorite Bronte I've read, even though I feel like you can't really compare the Bronte sisters it's so sad that they always get compared because they're sisters when they wrote such different things and such different styles but I'm gonna do it too, I'm gonna compare it not my favorite, however I do really want to read more Anne Bronte because I do think she is severely underrated um, this little book was just not for me, for me, I mean <laughs> um, not that I hated it, it just didn't... I liked it, I enjoyed reading it but it didn't stick with me, it's not like a story that I remain thinking about for the next couple of weeks. It was out of my mind as soon as I finished this book. Um, so it's honestly fine entertainment, but nothing more for me. And then we have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is one of my more favorite covers of the Wordsworth classics. I do really like this one. Obviously, Wuthering Heights is one of my favorite books. How could it not be? It's so incredible. It's gothic, it's romantic, but at the same time more obsessive and toxic and it has everything one would love. The writing style is amazing. Um, it's also kind of a frame narrative, which is something I apparently like. And I just remember reading this being completely stunned. I had never read anything like this. Also, obviously, this is one that I read pretty early on in my classics journey because it's such a famous one and it deserves to be that famous because it's just really good. And this is a cover that I do quite like. It really saddens me that Emily Bronte doesn't have another full novel like this one, but yeah, we'll take what we get. <laughs> Next we have a big jump to a children's classic being The Secret Garden by F. Scott... F. Scott? <laughs> I was gonna say F. Scott Fitzgerald. Frances Hutchinson Burnett. Yes. Um, this cover I think is rather cute. The child is a little creepy, but it's a fine cover. Um, this book I really enjoyed. I read it during spring, which is a perfect time. Again, it really warmed my heart to see these children form these friendships. That's just something I love reading about and seeing this little brat <laughs> end up being a very caring little girl. Um, very great character development, in my opinion. This is the only thing I've ever read by Frances Hudson Burnett. I always struggle <laughs> pronouncing her name, but I really do want to read something else by her because this was really enjoyable. I really liked this. Also, I'm sorry if the lighting is changing, but it's a typical fall day. Sometimes we have a little of sun, sometimes it gets really cloudy and I'm filming with natural light. So that's the reason, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, The Secret Garden. Fun little book. This font is also pretty big because that is one thing about the Wordsworth classics. Sometimes they have a very small font. Like, this is not normal. Most books have a bigger font. Um, and this one has a pretty big font probably because it's a children's book and yeah. I don't know why I mentioned that. <laughs> Next we have my only Charles Dickens book that I own in this edition now that I look at it. Except for the ghost stories, as I said. Um, this is also my first Charles Dickens I own, I think. I, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, this is Hard Times. Um, this cover, that's one that I hate. <laughs> I don't like it. I get the idea, but it's not, it's not doing it for me. Same with this novel in general. I got the idea. It was fine, but it was just so unlike Charles Dickens and I could really tell that this was not his usual setting, his usual character types. Everything was just kind of different and I'm all for experimenting, but therefore it's also not my favorite. It's definitely not A Great Expectations or Oliver Twist or one of his really great novels, but 
it's also fine. This also has illustrations, I'm pretty sure. Let me find them. I didn't show you any illustrations from Jane Austen. Wait, let me show you an illustration from Pride and Prejudice first. Cute little illustration. This is the officers of the Dota Dodger were in general a very creditable, gentleman-like set. These are the officers uh, from Pride and Prejudice. Hard Times has very different illustrations, also really beautiful. I love that they're like in a frame and how it's all pencil, but the clothes are like darker than the rest. Like I just like these illustrations a lot. So that is a good thing about this book that I really enjoyed. There's another one, very pretty. So that's that. Moving on, I have a two-in-one book, <laughs> being The Study in Scarlet and the Sign of the Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is obviously a Sherlock Holmes collection, the two first Sherlock Holmes novels. I read pretty recently, well, earlier this year, I think it was like February, so not very recently. Um, also, lots of cracks, lots of damage, but that's fine. Here you can really tell my annotation in it. I love it because the pages don't bleed through. I, yeah, I'm a fan of these editions. I'm making a whole video dedicated to them, so that shouldn't be a surprise. Um, but yeah, I don't have a lot to say about these. I do have a reading blog up for these two or only for Sunny and Scarlet. I don't know, for one of the two, I have a reading vlog up. I really enjoyed my reading time not my absolute favorites like I don't think I could binge read all of the Sherlock Holmes stories but I'll definitely make my way through it as time goes by in the future read the others next I have a book a small little book that is so incredible it is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald I think this is one of the most interesting books ever written it's kind of an allegory on the American dream and just America in general I love it. I love the characters. I love the plot. I love the writing. Everything about this is really good, even though it is rumored that half of this was actually written by a Scott Fitzgerald's wife, Zelda. So, yeah, I don't know. I just really like it. The cover, I think, is one of the better ones. This is really very much Gatsby vibe. So, I love how I'm discussing the covers more than I am discussing the plot but it's about these editions so this one I read in April of 2021 I actually always write down the month and year in which I read a certain book because I love just being able to grab a book and look back at it and immediately know when I read it um, I would love to reread this book one day next I have a book I have two books oh wait I actually have three books okay i have a couple of books by an author who i really love and somehow have not read that much of um and that is elizabeth gaskell first i have mary barton this book i read earlier this year i think it might have been one of my first books i read this year no actually i'm not sure now i think i read it in oh yeah i read it in april i got this book last year in london at the brick lane bookshop which is why this bookmark is still in here. Um, I also wrote a little, a little thing about where I bought it. This book is heavily annotated, as you can see. I loved it. <laughs> I love this book so much. I don't remember if I made a reading vlog of it, but I probably didn't if I read it in April. But sticky notes and all, I, I just adore this book. I love this so so much the plot everything i got this for three pounds three pounds like that's so incredible um this is honestly one of my favorite books that i've read this year i love elizabeth gaskell i loved all of the characters i love the plot i love the political economic aspect of it i love the backdrop of the industrial revolution i just love everything i love it how many times can i say love about one book a lot apparently um, but basically this is not the first book I read by Elizabeth Gaskell because the first book I read by her was actually North and South of which I own two copies this is the one I read from and then this one I got from my cousins um, who went to the 
I think a secondhand bookstore and they found this and thought I would really like this book and they were absolutely right because I had already read it and loved it and I'm actually glad that I have two copies of this because I really want to read North and South. So to give a little backstory <laughs> on my love for this book and my story with Elizabeth Gaskell, this is the first Victorian classic I ever read. I got into classics by reading Anne of Green Gables, as some of you might know. I read the whole series, loved it, but those aren't, ad <laughs> no, those aren't Victorian. They're actually a li little later, they're more like Edwardian, early 20th century. And basically, immediately after finishing that book series, I jumped into this, which is crazy, because I wasn't ready for this, I wasn't prepared for this. I tried annotating, you can see some slight annotations, not a lot. I think I actually write down on a sticky note, yeah, here's more explanations of my own um, annotations. I do have a reading vlog up for this, if you want to see that. If you scroll all the way down on my channel, you will find that. It's way back in the day, and the thing with this book is that I absolutely loved it. I adored it, I really did. But when I read Mary Barton, I realized that this is such a phenomenal book that I probably missed a lot of important things in North and South, which makes sense since it's my first Victorian classic I ever read. I think I was like 15 or 16 when I read this, so it makes sense that I didn't grasp the whole meaning, which is why I would love to reread it um, in this copy. Let me know which edition you like more, like which picture. I don't know why they changed it. That's also a weird thing they do. This is a clock and then this is, I guess, Margaret and Mr. Thornton, even though that's not really how I picture them. But yeah, really want to reread this, so I'm glad that I have two copies of this one. And then I have two books by another one of my favorite authors being Thomas Hardy. I really love his books. He's such a great author. The things he writes about, love it. Also, his editions also match, like they're all nature theme, as you can see. The first one I read by him was Des of the D'Urbervilles. I loved it. It has deckled ed edges. I don't know if you can see that. That is a bit weird. I don't know why it has that, but I love this book so much. I remember being absolutely shocked because I didn't think a book could end this badly <laughs> and still be so good. Um, the characters in this were so... Not I, not relatable, <laughs> not relatable at all, luckily, but they were so dramatic and went through such traumatic things and it was honestly really entertaining, it was a really good book. It's definitely very sad and if you want to read it, I do recommend looking up the trigger warnings because it's not for everyone. I don't think everyone's gonna love this book because it is literally heart-wrenching, it's gonna rip your heart out, make you sob for Tess, but I do recommend it. I think it's really good. I think it's better than his other novel, Far From the Madding Crowd, which is also really famous. And I feel like that one and Death of the D'Urbervilles are the ones that readers start with from Thomas Hardy. I would recommend starting with Death of the D'Urbervilles, but if you're not ready to cry, <laughs> then maybe don't. And then the other one I have is Under the Greenwood Tree. This I also read. It's more of a little book about changing society. It's about old traditions fading away into the new society. Um, it's about rural life making its way for new industrial life and it's it's really good. It's not too depressing, I think. It's it's just a quite happy, positive take on that. Um, so yeah, lovely cover as well. Love the pink, love the little pigs. <laughs> um, also a great novel. This one I didn't really, this didn't stick with me as much. I didn't find myself thinking about this much after reading it, but it was definitely just a fun, enjoyable, quick read. We've almost come to the end of all of the books. Then I have my only William Shakespeare play that I have in this edition. It is The Merchant of Venice. This was not my favorite. I'm not a professional when it comes to Shakespeare. Um, his plays, I feel, are really hit or miss for me. I loved Twelfth Night. Obviously love Romeo and Juliet. Hated this one. Absolutely hated this. Honestly, I haven't read a lot of his other stuff. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just haven't. Um, this one I really didn't like. I really didn't. It wasn't for me. Not my favorite. Um, but 
yeah, it's fun to have, I guess. This is definitely a Shakespearean cover. I honestly don't really have a lot to say about this. I think there's better Shakespeare plays to read if you want to get started. I recommend Twelfth Night. I think it, that is definitely an incredible play. So, just my opinion. Next, I have a book that I love so much. I made two reading vlogs dedicated to this two years ago, summer of 2021. I remember it all too well, pun intended. Um, this is Anna Karenina or Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. <laughs> just look at this. This is just crazy. This is absolutely... This was already a massive break and then I just added all of those annotations. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> I've never annotated a book this much and it was genuinely because I loved it. Would love to reread it one day, but as you can tell, not from this copy. <laughs> I will not be able to make my way through this again with all of these annotations. I This reading journey of this book, this whole experience with Anna Karenina made me so happy. I love this. I'm... yeah. This is also one of the covers that I actually really do like. I don't know, I honestly don't know what to say about this because I have so much that I could say about this. Levin and Kitty are two of my favorite characters ever. I love the parallels between Levin and um, Anna Karenina and the way they kind of like switch positions. How can I say that better? I don't know how to phrase that in a better, more understandable way, but they're kind of like parallels of each other, but the other way around where Anna Karenina starts with a happy family and ends... Mm, I'm not gonna spoil it. You know what? I'm just gonna shut up and not spoil it, but... It's so good. If you ever want to commit to a Russian classic novel, this is it. <laughs> this is what you should commit to. It's also just very fun to read. Like, it doesn't feel so long and it doesn't feel like it's a very serious book or whatever. There's definitely serious topics, but the plot is so entertaining. The story is so entertaining. It's so well written. I mean, obviously this is a translation, so I don't really know. I wish I could read this in the original language, but... I probably will never be able to do that. So for now, I just love this one so much. This is probably my most prized possession when it comes to a book. Like, if this house was on fire and I could only save one book, it would be this one because I dedicated so much time to it and annotations and everything. I love, I love it. This is why I buy physical books because I need to be able to do this if I love a book. But then, moving on to the last black one I have is one that I read very recently, The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. I mentioned this in my last wrap-up video. Honestly, I was a little disappointed by it. I do like the cover. It matches perfectly with Lily Barth. I don't know what happened. Do you see the my ink over there? <laughs> um, also absolutely destroyed. Didn't love this book. It was honestly... The start was enjoyable, but at the end I just was rushing through it to get it finished, so not my favorite, but as I said, I talked about this more in depth in my last wrap-up, so I'm not gonna do that now because this video is already very long. And then I have two other Wordsworth classics that are not the black ones. I have, first of all, The Way of All Flesh by Samuel Butler. This book is such a fever dream to me because I don't remember this at all. Apparently I read this in July 2021 and I remember I read this while I got vaccinated. Like after I got vaccinated I had this book with me because you have to wait for 50 minutes before you can go. And I was reading this and I remember it, I just don't remember what exactly this was about. Um, literally no, no memories at all so I'm sure this was not a very important read for me. <laughs> And then lastly, I have the second and last book that I haven't read, and also just the last book that I'm gonna show, and that is Selections from the Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio. I thought during COVID, like, I'm gonna read the Decameron, like, that's so fun, like, a fun little, you know, the plague, COVID, you know, um, and I never read that. I... I tried, I read the first two stories, I really wasn't into it. It's also just the selections, it's not even the whole thing, so... I do think I'm gonna give this book away or, I don't know, get rid of this book because it doesn't make me happy seeing it on my bookshelves unread, knowing it will be unread for the rest of my life, probably. I think the concept, the idea of this book is very fun, but I just couldn't get into the stories at all, so... 
this is not for me. Anyways, 20 books later, those are all of my Wordsworth classic editions. Let me know if you want to see these videos for other editions like the Penguin editions, well, Penguin editions, the Oxford classics or any other editions I might have. I'm actually not sure which other ones there are. Um, let me know. I really enjoy doing this because it's a fun way to talk about books that, ooh, my stack is falling. It's a fun way to talk about books that I haven't talked about in a really long time and to show you a bit of my collection without having to actually do a whole bookshelf tour, which is always annoying because I have those like floating cubes. I will also show you how these books fit into my shelves um, to give you a little overview. But I have these floating shelves, I guess, and it's just really hard filming a um, bookshelf tour with those. And also I feel like since my last bookshelf tour, it hasn't changed too much. I have just added new books to it, but the whole layout is the same, so I don't think it will be very interesting to do that. So this is how the books look on my shelf. I think it's so pretty. They fit absolutely perfectly. These are all the black ones, and then these are the two exceptions that I have. And in the grand scheme of things, this is what they look like. I love my Word Word Classics. Uh, Yes, now you know all of the books I own in the Wordsworth Classic editions. Let me know what your favorite book editions are um, and why. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay reading. And I'll see you next time. Bye!